Hello everyone, we are here at Core TV. Core TV back on the air this May. Absolutely amazing. I'm Vinny Politan. And I'm Seema Iyer. And Hello. We, we are two of the hosts slash anchors of Court TV, bringing we you all are. the coverage. We're also lawyers. We are. Yeah, as are all of the hosts and our correspondent at Court TV. Lawyers, journalists, yeah. singers, dancers. We got it all, baby. I, I did a little break dancing back in the day. You did break dancing like 30 minutes ago in the newsroom. What are you talking about back in the day? Okay, okay. okay let's get to so, business. So what we're doing today here on our uh, Court TV Update is giving you a, a look at uh, trial strategies because you're watching a trial, you're seeing the different parts, and what we're doing because we are not only journalists but people who practice law is yeah. kind of take a closer look at the different pieces of a trial, and today it's all about closing arguments. My favorite. It is. And do you remember what Sandra Bullock said to Matthew McConaughey in A Time to Kill about closing arguments? All right, all right. No, <laughs> no idea. Didn't say that. She said, it ain't over till the summation. And for me, that really rings true because I think a trial can be won or lost sometimes on the ultimate summation. On the closing argument. Okay. Closing argument. And, and they're called summations or closing That's arguments. That's right. Um, how did you prepare when oh, you were doing God. closing argument? You know, I loved the prep for a closing argument. So the one thing I urge everybody to do who practices law or students of the law, and that is you have to read every single word in the transcript. So if you have a transcript, let's say a month-long trial, I've had three-month-long trials. Are you serious? Absolutely serious. Now, sometimes what I would do if I was on, let's say, a three-month trial, over the weekends or at night or on days that we weren't on trial, I would catch up and take notes and tab everything. So it would be easier to prepare for the closing argument. But Minnie, it's like television. That's where you find your sound bites. And you put all your sound bites together for the closing argument. But that is the number one way to prepare is read the entire transcript. All right, now, um, for the defense attorney, what's the key to a good closing argument for the defense attorney? You've prepared, you've read the transcripts. What are you looking to do? How are you looking to raise a reasonable doubt? Well, I think it really depends on whether you have facts and evidence in your case to your advantage, right? So if you have a case that you do have facts and evidence to point to, to point to the defendant's not guilty uh, to that type of verdict, then what you do is you compile all of this from the transcript, from the evidence, the actual evidence, whether you have documents, whether you have video, whether you have a 911 call, and you put it all together. Now, I am a big fan of the multimedia presentations, like a laser light show for the jury. I really do, I love it. And then so you put everything together, you know, it, people respond to the visual, right? People respond to visual. So you putting the words on the screen, coupled with a little video, you know, sound bites from it, let's say an interrogation video, coupled with you put the medical records on the screen, big highlighter around that, you know, just give them the visual and tell them a story, which is also what we do as journalists. Right. So that's that. That's definitely my way yeah, to do I think telling a story is great. You know, from a prosecution perspective, when I would prepare a closing argument, I would do it before the trial started. Oh, yeah. As a prosecutor, I knew what my case was going to be. I knew what my evidence was, and hopefully it would go in the way I wanted it to go in. So I would start by preparing my closing argument first and then figure out, okay, this is where I need to end. How do I get there through my witnesses, through my evidence? And, and to me, the key to a closing argument um, for a prosecutor is we have the burden of proof. Exactly. We, we, you so just, we've I was to, thinking that right now. We've yeah. got to give them that roadmap. So I've got to take the law, you know, the elements, the things that I need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt, each element of the crime, and break it down one by one and point to specific evidence, testimony, physical evidence, whatever it is that proves that element of the crime and give them that roadmap so hopefully they would remember it and take it into the jury room and if someone was kind of leaning my way would be able to make the arguments for me uh, with the other jurors. Now, we mentioned during our uh, video on opening statements that the defense doesn't have the burden of giving an opening statement. Defense attorneys can waive, they don't have to do that. But it's interesting because for closing arguments, defense attorneys do have to give a closing argument. Absolutely. But like you said, I think it's really important. People don't understand that for a defense attorney, you can be dramatic, you can quote Shakespeare and uh, famous lawyers like Johnny Cochran, and you can do all of that song and dance, 
But for prosecutors, you have to prove certain elements. Right. And your closing argument has to take that into, into account. Absolutely. And you, and you played a little bit more uh, straight than the defense attorneys most of the time. I can't imagine you ever But being, I didn't. Did but you? Because I, yeah, I, I can't imagine you like keeping it together. I could. But <laughs> here's the other thing closing. that I would do because we would go last. Prosecutors yeah. give the final closing argument because we have the burden of proof. Which is so, opposite for opening. Right. Openings, we go first and we go last. First word, last thing they hear is going to be me. So during the defense closing argument, I would listen closely because if they're making any points and point to anything, I get the last word on it. So I want to be able to respond to certain things. I wouldn't do it off the top. I wouldn't do it at the end, but I kind of put it in the middle and say, oh yeah, you heard uh, Ms. Iyer talk about this, this, and this. Well, let me tell you what, you know, why that's not true well, or, or make the arguments to pick apart your reasonable doubt. And you know what I always did? I always would keep in mind, I would write it down to not forget that the prosecutor is going to uh, try to take down my arguments. So what I would say in the end is, listen, Mr. Politan's going to get up here and he's going to give you all of this uh, fluff on his argument and he's going to attack me and attack my client and let me tell you why that's not true. So I tried to be preemptive in predicting what the prosecutor is going to say. Now uh, I have one line okay. I'd like to share and I don't remember where I got this line but I used to, all, I used to use this a lot. During, in front of the jury? In front of the jury. Okay. You ready? It's easy to convict. It takes courage to acquit. What do you think of that line? Do you like it? No, you no, know, it's 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 good because you're what you're doing is empowering the jury and giving them saying, yeah, yeah. well, I, I could do that. I so could do I that. would use that yeah. line a lot. Yeah, but what I would say is, <laughs> this is a simple case, folks. No matter I how it's easy to convict. It's easy to convict. Yeah. Exactly. Of course, so it's easy to convict, ladies and gentlemen, because the facts are there. The facts are there. No, We've got the eyewitness. Listen, don't, Your client's you DNA was at the don't scene. Don't rush home because you want to watch uh, Friday Night Lights or whatever it is and you're ready to go home to your family. This is a guy's life on the line. Sit there. Deliberate. Stay here all night. We'll order you food. Come back Saturday morning. We'll bring you breakfast. Don't rush to judgment. I trust you, ladies and gentlemen, to come back with the right verdict. <laughs> are we done? All right. Um, yeah, that's it for now. <laughs> so leave your comments, questions you have. Don't forget, Court TV, back on the air this May. It, it's amazing. And you'll see some incredible closing arguments as we cover trials from coast to coast, gavel to gavel. You'll see the openings, all the testimony, all the evidence. And, of course, you'll hear the closing arguments so you can make up your own mind about whether or not someone is guilty or not guilty. That's right. See you next time.